In this section, we'll be looking at the enthalpy calculations. To do that, there'll be one formula that we'll be using, which is that Q is equal to MC change in T. It's important to note that C is the specific capacity of the solution. And you'll be 4.18, either in kilojoules per Kelvin per kilogram or joules per Kelvin per gram. So the specific capacity of the solution is given in the data booklet. Change in T can either be in Kelvin or degree Celsius. And as far as the mass is concerned, the mass has to be selected to correspond to the unit that you decide to use for the specific capacity. If you decide to take kilojoules, then the unit of mass would have to be kilogram. If you decide to use the specific capacity as 4.18 joules per Kelvin per gram, then the mass would have to be in grams. Let's take a look at some calculations. So in this first example that we have, we're using 0.18 grams of hexane. They underwent complete combustion. Heat energy produced raises the temperature of the 100 grams of water. One needs to understand the chemical energy stored in hexane, which in this case is represented by our enthalpy of combustion of hexane. That is the chemical energy stored. It's going to be released as heat energy to actually heat up the water. So in this case, when we use the formula Q equal to MC change in T, we're actually looking at the heat energy absorbed by water. Hence, when we apply the M, we're looking at the mass of water, which in this case, we're taking it to be 0.1 kilogram because our 4.8 is in the unit kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And the temperature change here, using 47 degrees Celsius subtract by 22, is actually 25 degrees Celsius. So that is the temperature change. And from there, we can work out that the heat energy that is absorbed by water is 10.45 kilojoules. Next, we will then convert the 0.18 grams of hexane to number of moles. And finally, to determine the enthalpy change of combustion, we'll take the heat energy divided by the mole. That is on the assumption that there is no heat energy loss to the environment. That means whatever chemical energy that's released by the combustion of hexane or is perfectly transferred to the 100 grams of water. So that's how you end up with the enthalpy of combustion as negative 4504 kilojoules per mole. Finally, in this type of calculations, the typical mistakes that students make is when they wrongly identify M as the mass of the reactants. So in the earlier, in the earlier example that we just did, you will be totally incorrect if you take mass as 100 grams of water plus 0.18 grams of hexane. Let us take a look at another example. In this example, 25 cm cube of 2 mole per dm cube of HCl is added to 25 cm cube of 2 mole per dm cube of NaOH. The initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. And finally, the mixture reaches a maximum temperature of 33 degrees Celsius. We are supposed to determine the enthalpy change of neutralization. So again, the enthalpy change of neutralization is the chemical energy. The chemical energy that's produced, 100% of it goes to the water. And in this case, to be specific, it is the mixture solution of acid and base. And in this case, we can see that the total volume of the resulting solution is 50 cm cube. And we typically assume that the density of the solution is one gram per cm cube, which means 50 cm cube is actually equivalent to actually 50 grams. And from 50 grams, we can substitute the mass as 0 0.05 kilogram. And again, 4.18 is in kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And 13 degrees Celsius is a temperature change. So with that, this is the amount of heat energy absorbed by the solution. And based on the definitions of enthalpy of neutralization, we need to find out the number of moles of water form. So stoichiometrically, we can derive the number of moles of water form is 0.05. So from there, we can calculate the enthalpy change of neutralization. This imperative, you remember to add the negative signs as the temperature increases and reaction is exothermic. Let's now take a look at another example where the efficiency of the transfer of chemical energy to heat energy is no longer 100%. So in this case, it's only 90%. So in this question, we have 0.4225 mole of sodium hydroxide dissolved in 70 cm cube of water at the initial temperature of 22.4 degrees Celsius. We are supposed to calculate the enthalpy change of dissolution of your solid NaOH 
given that the final solution reaches 86.6 uh, .6 degrees Celsius. Hence, in this calculation, to start off, we noted that the mass of the solution is 70 grams. The temperature change works out to be 64.2 degrees Celsius, and the specific capacity we are using is Joule per gram per Kelvin. The number of moles of your NaOH is 0 0.4225 mole. So the Q total, which is your chemical energy that's released, is your enthalpy change of your dissolution multiplied by the number of moles of your NaOH. So therefore, the heat energy, which is equal to MC change in T, should only be 90% of the chemical energy. So bear in mind that the Q total is the chemical energy. Q in this case is the heat energy that's been absorbed by the solution. So the heat energy is only 0.9 of the chemical energy change. So in this case, we can express them as such. Now we can substitute the relevant values into MC change in T, which is pan out here. Hence the magnitude of the enthalpy change of this solution of sodium hydroxide works out to be 49.5 kilojoules per mole. And in this case, the enthalpy change will be negative 49.5 kilojoules per mole since the reactions incurs a temperature rise, which is exothermic. Finally, we'll take a look at experimentally how we can derive the change in T. So in this experiment, we are studying the enthalpy change of neutralization of sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. So you can prepare a sample of NaOH, some submerge a thermometer inside the solution, start your stopwatch. And you can plot the temperature of the mixture of the solution. In this experiment, at two and a half minutes, we will then pour in the hydrochloric acid. Once we pour in the hydrochloric acid, we'll continue to record the temperature at every half minute interval. So we can actually record all these points on the graph. So after we plotted the graph, we can analyze the graph. So in the analysis of the graph, we would have drawn the blue line as indicated on the graph. However, it will, be, it will not be correct for us to actually read off the maximum temperature as this. This will not be the correct change in temperature. The reason is because when hydrochloric acid is added and as the temperature rises, heat energy will be lost to the environment. What we need to do is to extrapolate the graph that we indicated here. We should then determine the change in temperature when you actually add the HCL at two and a half minutes and trace the line up all the way to this temperature. So this is the correct change in temperature where the heat energy loss to the environment is accounted for. This is a diagram of a bomb calorimeter can be used to, to determine the standard enthalpy change of combustion or formation. So for example, in this case, if you have to determine the combustion of oleic acid, then we can put oleic acid inside here and we can put excess oxygen. The bomb calorimeter has a water jacket where its temperature is actually being controlled. The idea for having that is to ensure that whatever chemical energy that's released from the combustion of the sample is all absorbed by the water and no heat energy is being lost to the environment. 